take video, you'll take it in a premiere, or you can mix the two together with some special effects or some green screen. You're basically going to be dealing with pixels. So you got to understand the basic knowledge of how to manipulate pixels in order to get the best visual that you want. Now when I did visual effects, our goal was to make the computer look like it was photorealistic. Uh, so, you know, we see Toy Story and we know that those are animated characters. And we see things like uh, Pixar is a prime example. Um, they were a rendering company that went into a movie studio. So that looks that you see, that's just a Pixar software. But they made them into characters. So they're very distinctive. They're animated. They look different than the real world. But you have other things like, uh, what's the, some of the latest movies? Uh, where you have explosions, where you have glass, where you have water, and they're supposed to look real. Well, a lot of that stuff was done by computers, and that revolution started like in the early 90s. So that's where I actually got my basics, that's where I got my chops. I love animation, but the animation lifestyle gets to the point where you work 60, 70, 80 hour weeks. And if you ever work 80 hour weeks, you know that the only thing you can do is go to the bathroom and work. 80 hours a week is 12 hours a day, and then a day, 8 hours on Sunday. So, I wanted a different lifestyle, I resigned, and I started doing my video production company. Alright, so, now, I've been in the game since the cameras were like 15 pounds, and I used to have them over my back, and I had a tripod, and I was carrying all these different things, now I have this. This little thing right here, I stick on another lens. I got, I can go from all the way, way over there. So now I travel very lightly with just either one or two lenses. It's a huge difference. Why is this a huge difference? You know, I can go anywhere with this. I'm a photojournalist. I always am shooting things. I have basically my tool with me at all times. When I'm actually uh, need flexibility, uh, I was just at the Taste of Soul. Anybody go to the Taste of Soul this weekend? Okay, great. It was like 300,000 people on Crenshaw Boulevard, crowded. You do not want a tripod, you do not want a big camera, because there's a lot of people and it was hot. You want flexibility. I had a mic, I was able just to come right to you, hey, give me what you need, boom, 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 go by. Hey, boom, flexibility, speed, and this is powerful. This is extremely powerful. Compared to the first camera I got for myself in 1998, the pixels are like 820, 720. This thing is like five times more powerful and about six times light. What is that? What model is that? Uh, this is a Panasonic GH3. This camera is about three or four years old. The new one out is GH4 for 4K. But, you know, this right here. How many megapixels? Uh, well, for video, with 2K. Uh, the megapixels, yeah, see, I'm not really into photos, but I think it's, you know, 13. Oh, no, no, no. But is 2K already? 2K is okay for your... 2K is great for right now. 2K is great. Um, but this is different. The, 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 camera that brought the, the camera that really changed the game is the Canon 5D and the Canon 7D. The thing about the camera 5D is that Canon has great lenses. So they take wonderful pictures and they happen to have a camera that took good video. But it had a lot of drawbacks. So when Panasonic said, we're going to do something, we're going to make this more for people who want to shoot good video. And so they don't have the spectacular lenses like Canon, but they have good lenses and it shoots great video. So this is what I'm doing now. Um, your new iPhones, that has 4K resolution. That's twice as much as this one here. So the drawback with that thing right there and those phones is that you really can't zoom in. You know, you can basically just stay right here and get a good shot right here. But if you want to get something way over there, you're a little limited. Or you may have to buy something on top of it, you know. And again... Well, with the new iPhone 7, um, 7 Plus, it has two lenses. And now you could zoom in a bit more. That's fabulous. And so he's leading to my next point. You guys have, like awesome technology at your fingertips. Like, if I would have had this when I was like college, if I would have had the same, you know, um, I guess enthusiasm, because now, you know, when I was in college, we didn't have access to equipment. We had to go through a big company, you had to go through your college. We were begging for access. So you guys have access so plentifully that you don't really appreciate it culturally as far as your generation. My culture, we didn't have this, so we're like hungry. 
You guys have it all around you, but you're not using it. How many of you use your phone for Facebook? How many use your phone for Snapchat? How many use your phone for Twitter? How many use your phone for text? My thing, this is the side talk. Why are we consuming when you can be producing? Why are we spending so much time just consuming pixels, looking at pixels, having a pixel affect our memory, our brains? Why aren't you positioning yourself to actually sell products? Why haven't you, I'm, I'm just generalizing, I'm not specifying for anybody, but in general, you have YouTube right over there at Playa Vista. If you get a certain amount of subscriptions, you can use their own studio. It's 10,000 subscriptions, it's not that many subscriptions. You know, what you can be utilizing, everybody in this room can take a particular zone and get really good at it. So you have somebody who's a great filmer who actually captures great sound. He hooks up his sound here and makes sure that he can hear it and that his camera is steady and that his lighting is decent. That's a videographer. Then you have an editor and he'll go in or she'll go in and he'll, they'll edit it, they'll make it look great, they'll tell a story. And then you have somebody that's a Facebook uh, marketer who actually understands how to get the image out there, how to get the story out there. The same for Twitter. And the, if you're going to start incorporating social media, start incorporating and looking at what's driving your eyeballs. Find out what your college, or excuse me, your student teammates are watching. Why are they interested in that blog? Why are they interested in that post? Why is everybody talking about it? Try to remember what got captured their attention. And then you can create something that captures other people's attention. That's what this game is about now, to capture your attention. There's so many things that want your attention. The TV wants it, Twitter wants it, Netflix wants it, Amazon wants it, ABC, everybody wants your attention. That is the golden, the golden shoe right now. <coughs> what is it going to be to capture your attention? Okay? Okay. So, when you're... I know we have a short time. Does anybody have any questions of Mike right now? Instead of producing. So, what, how, do, how do you make money when you're producing? Okay, so YouTube. Easy. You put something on YouTube, you monetize it by just clicking a button, and it can make money. The problem with YouTube is now you got to let people know that, hey, what's my channel about? So, I'll give you the five minute YouTube formula. If you're going to do a YouTube, find a niche that you're good in, find a niche that you're interested in. That could be, you know, uh, basketball players in high school. I don't know. But if you find a niche, the next thing you want to do is give people free tutorial, free information. Give them something that they may not know about what it is you're doing. Let me think of an example off the top of my head that's really good. Um, uh, fitness. I want to be a fitness instructor. Wow, the majority of people that I see now have a little pooch in their stomach. So now I'm going to create a video that basically gives people free information of five things that they can do to make their stomach go down. And I'm going to lay it out. You always A nice top five or a nice top ten is a good eye catch. And then basically people are like, oh wow, I'm getting free information. Anybody that wants to see free information, that usually gets a nice um, attraction. So you give something away for free, then you give a, another video that's more free about it, and then you start hooking them with stuff that you may want to sell them later. So now you have a oof ball. That's one thing that I'm uh, participating in. A oof ball is a medicine ball that floats and bounces. It's really good for your cardio, and it's great for your um, uh, abs. So then after I build my audience, then I'll sell them a product. While you're doing that, you make money on every, every, every uh, view that people watch on YouTube, you're making money. So, how much money can you make off of you? If you get about a million views, that can average about $2,000, all right? That's one video. So, if you have a couple of videos that are doing that, then that becomes reciprocal. So, ideally, the way to generate on YouTube, if you're getting about 2,000 to 2,500 views a day on one video, then people are coming to your channel. When they are watching your channel, you kind of own that space. Take a look at YouTube. Find out what is a suggested video. Look at some of the people who have nothing but their stuff on suggested video. Ask yourself why they have all their suggestions. They own that entire space. 
um, another thing that when you have suggested videos, you're suggesting off of somebody else's video. So that's one of the uh, landscapes of YouTube. So when you have one video that's getting 2,000, you're bringing people into your world, now they're looking at other videos. And so if you've got another video that's doing the same thing, you understand it, it starts to add up and it multiplies and it goes exponentially high. It just doesn't go two times two times two. The curve starts to go like this. So the more videos you put out, tutorial, learning, giving them something for free, then you're bringing in your audience. So that's one way that you can make money off of YouTube. Another way that you can make money is that now you're selling a product. So you build your subscription. Now you're running some type of ad on Facebook, on Twitter. One of my things that I did, um, I don't know, some of you might have remembered this, the Cardi B and oh. Peter Gunn's thing. Oh. You guys remember that? <laughs> okay, great. So I wrote this great article about why, um, uh, why what Cardi B says is kind of hit close to home. And so it was really detailed article in the history, blah, blah, blah. Didn't nobody really cared about my article. What they cared about was that stupid picture that I made, that little meme that I had, that had Peter Guns with his wife and Cardi B in the middle. So I spent $30, and my goal was to build up my subscriptions. So I spent $30, I paid, and I got like maybe a couple of hundred page likes, right? So after I got a couple hundred page likes, all the people that start, when, you, when, you, when it goes viral, people start liking the video, but they don't like your page. So you can go back in and start inviting people to your page or the people who like your video. So I might have had like, I don't know, three or 4,000 people that like the video, but only 10% of them, 300, actually like my page. So I went in and I invited all the people that liked my video but didn't like my video. And I correspond that with a new video that was coming out. So you're like, if you come see my invitation, come to my page. They're like, oh, I'm gonna come to his page. I would have a new video to come out so you see my new video first on my page. So now you get an idea of what I want you to see and then you can like my page and then start consuming my stuff. When you consume my stuff, I make money. So that's what you want to do. You want to attract your audience. Boom, that was with a meme. Meme is probably the most powerful thing you can do to attract your audience. A little picture that has a story, a little tagline, up and down. That right there is the most powerful thing that people are watching on Facebook, on Twitter, getting people to click. And that's just graphics. Okay. Okay. What did you use memes, drawing of yours? What are the techniques that you use to do that? What are the techniques to create the meme? I mean, to um, you know, get more viewers. Well, meme is one thing. I, I just gave you guys a, uh, I, I, I made a meme. I spent money on Facebook. And how I took 300 likes and made it into 1,000 without paying more money. So that was a, a direct thing that I did. Um, so, you know, uh, you gotta, you got to ask yourself, and I'm going to be brief because I know we want to move. you got to ask yourself, when you're creating the advertising, are you creating an advertising for people to buy a product, or are you creating an advertising for people to, uh, to subscribe to your channel? There's two different techniques, and you have two different goals. Okay, Mike, we had a question over there. Okay. So let's just, can he, is he going to stay here? Yeah, we'll wrap it up. So we can come back. No, actually, we're going to wrap it up here because I want to just have him, um, you know, follow you guys and okay. say goodbye to you guys.